I guess selling 8 million copies in under 6 days, we can officially say POW World has taken the world by storm. Now I've been playing the game, spent well over 10 hours now in the game, and here are 15 tips and tricks that you must know if you want to take your gameplay to the next level. Food is super important in POW World, both for your character, but equally as important for your POWs. But I'm sure that many of you guys have noticed that food actually has an expiration timer in the game. And yes, it is true that you can actually craft a cooler box to help slow down that timer. But the cooler thing about the cooler box is that by placing a food item into the box, its expiration timer resets completely. And the same goes when removing the item from the box. Now, this is obviously something that might end up actually being patched out in the future. But as of right now, if you have a food item that is about to expire, place it into and take it from the cooler box and the timer freshly resets gliding is almost always a really fun mechanic in video games and pow world is no different so if you want to glide it's actually quite simple all you need to do is hit level 5 on your character and then unlock the normal parachute under the technology tab then head over to one of your workbenches and using 10 pieces of wood and two pieces of cloth you will get yourself your glider Enjoy gliding the skies of Pal World as well as, I guess, avoiding fall damage because now you actually have a glider available to you. But as a bit of a bonus point here, you can actually also catch certain pals and craft their corresponding pal gear, like special gloves for Kalimari or Celeray. And once you do that, you can actually glide way faster for longer distances than with just the normal parachute. Oh, and of course, once again, you still get to avoid fall damage, which is super handy. Now, I know that as soon as you craft a bed in a game like Power World, you'll be able to obviously skip the nighttime portions of the game, and you might want to pretty much exclusively skip the nighttime because it's darker, it's more difficult to see, it's more difficult to traverse, but I would actually suggest against doing that because you will actually miss out on countless pals because certain pals, like for example, Depresso here, will only spawn in the nighttime. So make sure to explore both during the day and in the nighttime, and be on the lookout for exclusive pals in both biomes as well as different times. Speaking of keeping on the lookout for things, if you spot one of these eggs laying out and about in the world, make sure to snag it. No, it is not like the regular eggs that you will find that you can actually cook meals with. These eggs are actually ones that can be turned into pals. You can actually take one of these eggs, build an incubator in your base, and then place the egg within the incubator, allowing it to incubate, and then you will be rewarded with pals. It's a great way to get a lot of rare pals early. It's a great way to just get a roster of pals much wider in selection. So I would definitely recommend to keep on the lookout for these eggs. And if you see one, pick it up, use it over in your incubator. It's probably best to not carry it with you because the vast majority of the time they do weigh quite a bit. So they will weigh your character down. Instead, once you find one, make sure to return to your base, put it into the incubator or into your storage. Next, let's talk about hunger. Managing your hunger can get quite tedious, but that is where the absolute best food item in the game comes in. That is the berries. Building a berry plantation and assigning some pals to plant and water the crops for you gives you a food item that spawns quickly, weighs very little, which means it will not actually weigh your character down and you won't have to worry about weight constraints. So obviously that is very useful and it's really great to use for feeding boxes for the pals that are working within the base. So again, a win, win, win all across the board. I will also say though, that I also did want to mention the fact that there are also jam filled buns, which to be honest, look more like a piece of toast with some jam on it, but it is a fantastic food item as well because it has an hour long expiration, which is awesome. It's really good at refilling your hunger levels at like 50 something points. So very, very useful in that sense. And it grants you a 10% defensive buff. It is a little bit more difficult to unlock because you need to get to the point where you can actually have a mill as well as be able to make flour out of wheat. But once you get to that point in the game, I would definitely recommend looking into unlocking this food item as well. When using Pokeballs, I mean Pal Sphere, sorry, similarly to the Pokemon Arceus Legends game, if you throw the Pal Sphere from behind a pal, you actually receive a back catching bonus. 
which will substantially increase the chance of you actually catching the pal that you are targeting. So take advantage of this element to give yourself the best chance of success. Next, let's talk about traversal. We already talked about gliding, which is obviously awesome and useful, but there's also an option in Pal World to build saddles for your pals, allowing you to essentially unlock a mount mode. And the cool thing is that these saddles are actually available in three separate different categories, allowing you to travel via the air by building a saddle for flying pal, water, which allows you to obviously traverse the waters, and finally, a land, which allows you to run across the land in a much more efficient and quick manner. As you level up in the game, you will unlock stat points to power up your character with six options available to you across HP, Stamina, Attack, Defense, Work Speed, and Weight Capacity. Now, obviously, there is not one defensive stat that is the perfect one to upgrade. However, I do believe that from my experience of playing the game, that most players should prioritize Stamina and Weight Capacity. The other stats are important, but most of those stats can be covered by simply adding a strong pal to your party and letting them do the fighting for you. Increased stamina and the ability to carry more stuff, on the other hand, are super useful specifically for just your main character. And in my opinion, for most players, that will yield the best return. I would focus on those two stats. Since we're discussing stamina, another cool trick using your stamina bar is to not allow it to drop all the way to zero because when it does, you are then incredibly limited in what you can do until the stamina bar is filled all the way back up. Instead, just let your stamina bar drop low, but don't let it drop to zero. It will quickly replenish, and you don't have to deal with having to wait until the bar is fully recovered. Now, I have waited about halfway through this video to ask you guys for a little bit of support, so if you can, and if you're enjoying the video, please take a quick moment to leave a like. Thank you guys so very much for your support. When setting up work sites for your pals, like the stone pit or the logging site inside of your base, take a quick moment and drop a storage box right next to it because pals will gather the harvested materials and place them in the nearest chest. So placing one nearby gives you a nice, organized, and efficient base setup. Plus, even if it's not a pal that ends up being the one to collect the resources and it's you, picking up a lot of the collected stone or wood will most likely restrict your ability to actually move around because of the weight limits. So having a chest right there sitting next to the site allows you to efficiently pick up the items and immediately place them in the chest. Next, let's talk about the Statue of Power. You can find these large statues in the wild, and once you actually have the ancient technology points unlocked, you can actually craft them for yourself as well, but these are terrific for upgrading your own capture power using the Lift Monk effigies that you've been collecting, or you can actually power up your PAL stats as well by using the PAL souls that you've been collecting. A great way to power up your character beyond just the basic leveling system in the game. As you run around on your adventures, and particularly if you successfully defend your base during raids, you will find these different rarity keys. Make sure to always carry them with you. They weigh very little, which means that they won't be hindering your weight capacity too much, and you don't want to stumble across a locked chest in the wild, only to then realize that you left your keys back at home base. But keep your keys on you at all times. Now, since I just mentioned the raids, I've seen a lot of people actually complain about the raids in the game, saying that the experience of having to deal with the raids ruins the experience for the game as a whole. Well, I have some good news for you. You can actually turn off and adjust that setting altogether even after you've already created your world. Just simply select your world and then before starting your game, hit the change world setting option and feel free to make your adjustments under the custom settings, including being able to completely turn off the raid events altogether. Now, Power World clearly borrows some elements from Pokemon, and another element taken from the Pokemon franchise is the elemental or type system for the pals. So keep in mind that similarly to Pokemon games, using the right element of a pal against another pal will actually give you increased effectiveness against those particular enemies. So keep this chart here in mind. And finally, if you're struggling, especially early on in the game, with being able to afford pal spheres, there is a solution. Simply build a ranch at your base, capture this pal called Vixie, which can be most commonly found in this biome right here next to the small settlement fast travel point. And once you catch one or two of these, simply assign them to the ranch in your base by picking them up and then throwing them in the ranch vicinity. And thanks to their dig here partner skill, they will continuously dig up different items. But the single most common item that they will dig up is actually 
regular PAL spheres, which means that you will essentially get an infinite supply of PAL spheres courtesy of this new PAL that you caught and of course the ranch settlement that you placed within your base. So there you have it guys, 15 tips and tricks for PAL world. I hope you found this useful and I hope that this will be something that will improve your experience in PAL world itself. If you have any tips or tricks that you would like to share with the community, use the comment section down below. I'll hopefully get you guys here on the next one. Peace out. See you later. Alligators. Bye-bye, everybody.